I wonder sometimes why write this book. I think part of it was just capturing my dad, um, sort of bringing him back to earth and giving him a legacy. And I think I needed to explore my own self and the ways Lloyd manifests in me. Lloyd, my dad, was a logger. When I was very young, we migrated around the Pacific Northwest following work. Um, my family of four lived in this tiny 16-foot trailer that we pulled from job to job. I'm not even sure how many logging camps we lived in. My brother Jesse was really my only constant growing up, and I think that sort of created a bond between us that was very important uh, because we'd end up moving through some pretty serious trauma together. Lloyd made life fun. He told stories, invented silly games, created things. He'd take us on walks in the woods or on the beach. And he always took the time to just stop and wonder out loud about nature and us kids and um, just to sort of show us how to be curious. I really learned a certain kind of freedom and joy in exploration with my dad. But Lloyd was also an addict and a child of generational poverty. He lived with a sort of constant sense of failure, I think. His mom was a devout Jehovah's Witness, and she died young. She was 42. I always had this feeling that Lloyd hated himself when he couldn't live up to what he saw as his mom's goodness, and that includes trying to stay sober. Lloyd was wired for hardship and had a feral nature that couldn't be tamed. He was sometimes very violent or inappropriate, or he'd get us into outrageous situations. And my mom left him after a very violent, scary night. And after she did that, his addictions came to define more of his life. He lost his job, and he started this cycle of spinning out of control, then getting into AA, then trying to stay sober, then falling off the wagon. And that would just repeat, and my brother and I were along for the ride. Lloyd started to make a habit of living in unconventional housing. He'd find a piece of land and just sort of squat there. Sometimes he'd clean up an abandoned trailer or build a shack. One year we lived in a huge army tent. This sort of housing was a symptom of Lloyd's illness. He had trouble paying rent and never had steady income. But for me and Jesse, it was also magical. We spent, you know, most of our time outside. We usually had a sort of outdoor kitchen where we cooked and Lloyd would build these beautiful elaborate gardens. So we normally you know, had a lot of chores and contributed to to the maintenance of these camps we lived in. Lloyd always lived in or very near a forest, so my time with him was spent in these incredible storybook landscapes, living very close to nature. Um, you know, so Lloyd's world was a constant adventure, and adventure is not just fun. There's risk and adventure and danger. And in this case, that was this monstrous element, this sort of werewolf transformation that would take him over and leave damage behind. As I grew older, I started to feel ashamed of my dad. The more I thrived in school and read books and saw how other families lived and how other dads behaved, the more distance opened up between us. When I was 16, I clashed with Lloyd's destructive side, and after that we were estranged for some years. We started to make peace and sort of work through how we might be able to love each other well, but we never figured it out before he suddenly died. Writing Rough House was an opportunity to let myself be curious about my dad and what made him. Today I still have close family struggling with mental illness, addiction, and poverty. And I think, you know, writing the book was also a way to sort of show the children in my family and beyond that, children whose parents struggle, um, a story where the child can take power from her origin, where she can choose safety and still love her parents, but also that there is intrinsic beauty there and value and strength. There are parts to envy and to honor. And I think that's something I learned from my dad that, you know, sometimes pain can make us mighty.